Welcome back to the Chasing Happiness podcast, an honest podcast about finding happiness, what it really means, and the process of getting there. My name is Crystal, and today I'm joined by a wonderful guest who I had just met two minutes ago, but I'm telling you, I already absolutely adore her. And her name is, and I'm going to try to get this correct because we did talk about the fact that I will probably mess it up. Her name is Rutika Handa, and she is a mom, a blogger, a life coach, and probably the best description I've ever seen on a website. She is an energy whisperer. And I absolutely love that. So do you want to introduce yourself really quickly to the Chasing Happiness community? Yes. Uh, you you kind of put out a bit of me there. And the rest of it is that I uh, am a person who drives on awareness as literally a tool in your life um, to quickly connect you about what awareness means to me compared to that very metaphysical airy fairy term of awareness out there. If you're talking to a little baby or literally like your pet, uh, what is it that you're communicating with? You're certainly not getting any words back from the animal or the little baby. It's really kind of a sense a perceiving of, oh, the baby doesn't want to play. It looks tired or does it you know, need a nappy change or something. I mean, that communication, which is nonverbal, is your awareness in you from day one. In fact, even from the point when you're in your mama's tummy. I love that. And that's such a big deal because so often we sort of, I don't want to say almost drone our way through life, but we do almost drone our way through life. And there we sort of lose touch of that awareness within ourselves. So what brought you to a place that this is what you do? My life and the trajectories that it would take. I mean, I would uh, opt for one um, career and then find myself leaving that and going to another one right from a diploma in travel and tourism to jewelry designing to um, having my own business as uh, uh, an entrepreneur uh, curating hand embroidered shawls from India and bringing them to the Netherlands Um, and then to becoming a coach. I mean, I was... (laughs) Sometimes wondering if something is the matter with me and I would literally be jealous of people that had it all in a smooth ride and were uh, in a cushy place in life. My uh, highlight in everything I would do was a struggle. And there came a point where I said, enough, there has to be something that I'm missing the mark on and what is it? And the minute I kind of took that charge, um, things started kind of showing up and I just let that instinct guide me, that awareness guide me. And now I'm here sitting in front of you. (laughs) I love this because you hit on something that I think a lot of the people listening to this podcast have experienced. And it's that moment of like, everyone around me seems to have it figured out. Everyone around me, you know, found this smooth path or so it seems. And here I am struggling from thing to thing to figure out what my purpose is because nobody really talks about that part of the struggle. Lots of people have to struggle. Lots of people go from one thing to another, but nobody talks about it. So it's seems like everyone around you has this smooth, direct line in front of them. But oftentimes we all live that experience where we go from one thing to another. And because we want to be unique individuals, we might fall into, as you said, more than one thing. You might be a coach and also do these beautiful scars. It's okay for you to be both. You don't have to pick one or the other, which I think is magical for people listening to this podcast to hear, because a lot of times we do in this society feel like we have to pick one thing. We have to be that one thing people want us to be. And there's a huge awareness that happens within yourself when you realize I am a complicated person. I could be 15 different things on any given day if I chose to be. That's huge. It is. And I would just like to say this to all of you who are perhaps trapped in a struggle is that you're not wrong. You're not wrong and don't give up on yourself. And most of all, don't give up on that happiness inside of you. Um, Could it be that perhaps you're choosing too little, but out of fear of failure or judgment from those around you of things like that, at least do one thing well, you are perhaps choosing little and ending up not able to come into your true, unique self, whatever that means for you. Oh, 
I love that. I love that because I think one of the things, especially doing this podcast and all the people that I get to talk to, one of the things I end up talking about frequently is that fear, that fear that people have about, I'm going to disappoint someone. I'm going to disappoint myself when it doesn't go well. I'm not going to be able to accomplish this the way someone else did. And so why would I even bother? And I think that's a big part of the journey. So having someone like you be able to say like, it's okay. Go ahead and do it. We don't know as human beings what we're capable of until we try. And part of the experience is learning to be okay with falling down, learning to be okay with learning the lessons that come along with that sort of failure. So I love that this is one of the things that you speak about. And I wonder for you, because you have had this sort of complicated journey that you know a lot of people have, but they don't talk about, I wonder what's sort of the biggest lesson that you have discovered about yourself and your awareness over the years every time I felt like stopping because I thought that this is it I should give up is that point when I did not and I succeeded that's huge because that's typically and and you know a bunch of the memes that you see online are like popping into my head now because that's typically where we have that moment of I I'm just not going to bother anymore and we have to have the resilience to push through no matter how difficult it is, because there is magic on the other side of that. Oh, I so love that. Yes. And to just, you know, share an example, like I, I've been driving now for about 18 years and out of those 18 years for about 14, 15, I uh, remained in my comfort zone saying that I will only drive around the city or, you know, maybe 20, 30 kilometers away at the most because highway driving is risky. What if the car breaks down or what if I, I crash the car? Um, I have young children. It's all right. I'm, I'm happy here. I'm doing a lot. Look, if I look at my list of achievements, people don't do that as much. So I was like, okay. But then I had this opportunity of doing an event in France in a small city and they didn't have any direct connections and I had to carry my stock. So changing buses and all that felt too tedious. So I just you know, started asking myself questions. Like, Is your fear even real? If you've been driving and you've never you know, had an incident, what is it about your driving that's put the fear of all these things happening to you. And from Holland to where I had to go is around 450 kilometers. So I was like, okay, I'm going. Because the minute I asked that question of, is this even real? It just went poof. And I did have the butterflies when I sat in the car. I was almost shivering with the the, the excitement, the adrenaline, and also yeah. a bit of that fear was creeping back, but I did it. I did it. The event was a success. And two nights later, I was back. And uh, since then, Crystal, my horizons have expanded for my everyday living. It's not as if you're doing that, you know, long distance trip every day. No, every day is about your cooking and your kids and everything. However, what felt here as in your boundaries now feel if guests can kind of perceive what I mean by here it's like my hands close to my head and otherwise they are like one one feet apart you start existing in a bigger you I love that and and I think it's really important for us to ask questions like that right how often when we're worried about something are we saying is this really my worry do I have a legitimate fear Or is this just my mind trying to play on that aspect of our psychology? Such a great question because, as you said, once you ask yourself that question and you actually sit with what the answer is, nine times out of 10, you're going to be able to know what the right answer is. But you have to be willing to ask and sit in whatever discomfort may come because of that. And your event was a success. And now your bubble is a little bit bigger because of that. And it didn't just change that one event. It's now changed your everyday life. That's amazing. I love this story. Thank you. Thank you so much. And and that's, that's what I would just ask you guys that growing is very uncomfortable. It's then going to come down to a choice of whether you want to have the discomfort of growing within you or you want to have that comfort zone and neither is wrong okay guys if you don't want to choose that's okay please don't make yourself wrong or bad about it 
when you are ready, you are ready. I wasn't ready for 14 years and then I was ready. So am I making myself wrong for those years? No. If I did, I would be in a constant state of judgment and that would impact my level of happiness inside me. Right. And I love that because I think often what happens is, especially when we get to a place where we're starting to make a change in some way, we're like, well, why didn't I do this sooner? And we beat ourselves up for not doing it. But as you just said, the truth is you're not ready until you're ready. And it's okay to not be ready. Some people make the change at 40, some make it at 20, some make it at 80. It doesn't matter where you are. It's about getting the tools that you need in order to feel comfortable moving forward. And not making yourself wrong is such a big deal because we carry so much guilt, so much shame, so much fear and anger and frustration and all of these other things with us from our everyday lives. Why on earth would we pile one more thing onto ourselves? Just be okay with it. Oh, I absolutely adore you. I love this conversation. (laughs) And I wonder, based on the experience that you have in not just changing your life, but helping other people change their lives, is there something that you wish you had known when you were younger that you now know? Or are you in a position where you sort of have an outlook that I have, like I wouldn't be who I was if I didn't experience it when I did. Yes, I am totally with you. If I could, I would say a high five crystal on that. (laughs) And because I am where I am today, it makes me, it's like my fuel to just continue with saying and feeling pumped up every day about, hey guys, let's be more aware. It's a tool. It's not just something that you read and and say, okay, be aware and that's about it and let's go back to our mind now. No, no, use it. It's not not supposed to be kept in a locker. (laughs) Yes, absolutely. And awareness is one of those things we can use everywhere. You know, we can use it with, as you said, pets. We can use it with people. We can use it just in, in nature. We can be constantly paying attention to our awareness but also our awareness of ourselves, which I love that you talk about this because this is such a big thing for people. So often, especially when I work with my clients, I hear, I cannot meditate. I cannot meditate. I cannot meditate. I cannot quiet my mind. I cannot sit still, all of these things. And what I always say to clients is, if you feel better standing up, making a cup of coffee every day, than you do sitting with your legs crossed in you know, like a Zen state, that's fine. But while you're making that cup of coffee, don't be thinking about the 900 things you have to do. Think about the cup of coffee you're making. Be aware of your actions while you're making it. Pay attention to the creamer as you put it in your coffee or the sugar, how the coffee feels, how warm the mug is, all of those things. Putting yourself in that state where you are aware of where you are in the moment. And ultimately, that's meditation, even if you don't see it that way. Exactly. That's so, so beautiful, Crystal. Uh, I I really, if I could tell people that that's wakeful meditation. And ever since I've stepped into this journey of making myself aware of what am I doing, um, I really don't feel the need for meditation. Uh, If it comes on, great. If it doesn't, I, I know that my waking time is spent in choosing to be more aware and more aware with every choice rather than to saying, all right, let me structure my day with one hour in the morning or evening or whatever. I have three kids. I have no time to structure my day. (laughs) I think there's a lot of listeners who are probably in the same position as you. My best friend has three kids, um, all under the age of six. She had twins a few years ago. And that is absolutely a conversation her and I have regularly. Like, I don't even have time to go pee by myself, let alone have time to meditate. And you're 100% correct. It is more about being aware, whatever that means for you. Maybe it's you're aware while you're making dinner. Maybe it's while you're playing with your kids, you're not thinking about work, but you're actually present and playing with your kids. All of those things matter. And you don't have to be somebody that meditates. You don't have to be somebody that does yoga. 
But if you want to be really present in your life, you need to be aware of how you respond to situations, how your body responds to stress, how your mind responds to certain things, how you show up in the world. All of that is that awareness. So I love, love, love that this is what you chat about. And for people who are listening to this podcast, who maybe have never really spent a whole lot of time thinking about awareness or how they can improve it, where would you suggest they start if they've never really done it before? Start with asking a question right now. Even when you're listening to this podcast, ask, uh, what are you aware of? Or if you're getting delayed for work, um, just ask a question of, um, what will it take for me? to have a a good meeting or a good presentation, whatever that you were going to work for and got delayed and your mind was really burning up your energy saying, oh my God, I've messed up or whatever not. Instead, just ask this question, what will it take for me to have a good presentation today? Or if your two-year-old is having a meltdown, what can I be right now that will allow me to get through this meltdown with ease? Such a great question. One of the things I've started to do for myself is every morning I wake up and I ask myself, how do you want to show up in the world today? Do you want to show up with kindness? Do you want to show up with a love? And it changes how you process the day. Because if you're consistently thinking in the back of your mind and being aware that that's how you want to show up, you tend to be a little more aware of your actions, of the things that you do throughout the day that can lead you to that. So I love this asking a question. And for people who are listening to the podcast, if they want to work with you or follow you or figure out sort of how they can buy some of the scarves or whatever it happens to be, I will, of course, post in the show notes all of the links. But do you want to tell people the best way to find you? Yes, Um Find me on Facebook at Ruchika Handa. That's the best way. My website goes by the name of Ruchika Handa. So you can just, you know, click and get me there. And my programs are all listed out on the website. If it's a single session that you want to start off with or a program, which is uh, one of them is very close to my heart, is um, thriving in your relationships, no matter who you're with or what you're doing. It all comes down to your relationship with you and uh, also connects with the theme of your uh, podcast today, Chasing Happiness. And uh, I just put a different perspective of choosing happiness because if you're under the notion that happiness will come visiting you, you have to kind of check in with yourself and correct that, that happiness is a choice. So unless you're not willing to choose it, (laughs) the minute something goes bad in your day or you're having a, you know, sticky, turbulent relationship, your happiness is going to fly out the window. Absolutely. And it's hard in some of those moments, especially if we're talking relationships, it's hard sometimes to remind yourself of that. But if you, again, it all comes back to that awareness. If you are aware that you want to choose to be the best version of yourself, you want to choose to create the most joyful life you can, how you show up in those difficult moments is going to be different because that's the choice you're making. And sometimes, you know, granted, I will 100% be honest with all of the listeners. I don't always make the best choice in some of those situations. And it's okay if you don't. It's important that you learn from that so that if it happens again, the next time that kind of situation comes up, you can be more aware of in this moment, I need to not behave the way I did before. I need to not show up with the disrespect or whatever it happens to be because, you know, relationships are complicated and people are complicated and we have to allow space for sometimes things are not going to go the way that we hope or we plan and that's okay. But the goal really is to be as purposeful in making changes so that next time It doesn't end up the same way. Or next time, whatever happens, you are a better version than you were the last time that it happened. So I love that one of the things you focus on is relationships because 
relationships can be tricky. And I think for the last couple of years, especially here in North America, relationships have been really difficult. I don't know about on your side of the world because, you know, everybody around the world has handled this COVID thing really differently. But relationships have really been strained here because here in Canada, especially, we've dealt with a lot of lockdowns and people never really anticipated being locked in the same space with the same person. So there has been a lot of challenges. So for people who are listening to this podcast, because relationships is one of the areas you focus on, if you could give people a piece of advice in this challenging time for them, what would that be? If you can walk away from any interaction happy, regardless of how crappy that was, you're good to go. A small example is my 17-year-old is into his last two years of school, and I've been kind of pushy and nagging, cloaking it in a loving you know, <laughs> tone. Unless you get your routine right, you are not going to be able to crack your last two years and get the kind of grades you want. And he has been rebelling. So I've been going inside. Sure. But that's the inside part, the energy, the exterior has been like, you have to get up on time and everything, the <laughs> smile on my face. Till I checked in with myself and I said, nah, you're not happy. You're burning your fuel. <laughs> and I just kind of changed and let go and realized that it's not about me. Let him kind of take his steps. And the only way he's going to be able to listen to me is when I am a neutral place. I'm actually happy. I was sacrificing my happiness into pushing him, thinking mm. that that is what he needed. Yeah, he has to hear it, but not from a very pushy parent. And the last three days have been literally like so light on my heart and he's opening up. Aww. So you've got to walk away from every interaction in any relationship feeling happy. If you can do that, you can untangle anything with I anybody. I love that. I absolutely love that. And I love that you're able to bring that to clients and the people you work with, because I think, you know, the more of that happiness, the more of that joy we can all bring into our lives, the better off the world is going to be, the more surrounded by love we're all going to be, the, the lighter our hearts are going to feel. So I absolutely love that. And I appreciate you sharing that story with everyone. For everybody who is listening, I, of course, am going to post in all of the show notes, all of the links, all of the Facebook and Instagram and all of those things so that you can, whether it's reach out and just say thank you for the episode, whether it's work, whatever it happens to be from a coaching standpoint or a scarf standpoint, or just a follow the journey because you're curious about it standpoint, I will put everything in the show notes. And I cannot thank you enough. This has been an amazing conversation. And I love that we ended up talking about awareness and sort of just being really present because we're recording this episode in December. It will probably air in January, but it really is that time of year where we're starting to take a look back and recognize how far we've come, maybe the things we want to change in the upcoming new year. And there really is this big sense of awareness around this time of year for us as individuals. So before I let you go, is there any last things that you'd like to share? Look ahead and take your past along with you from a point of view that it has contributed and will contribute to everything so long as you can let go of the judgment surrounding it. And even if you have to spend the next year in and out of COVID in too close a space where you feel your personal space is getting cramped on, just look in with yourself and the lesser the judgment there is inside you, the bigger a person you are for yourself and a bigger joy bomb you are for those around you. Even if you can kind of make this happen for one second in a day, it is a snowball effect and you will be different for yourself before you are for anybody else. Yes, absolutely. Yes. For you listening to this podcast, rewind, go back, listen to that again, a hundred percent. I love that. I love that. That's the last thing you shared with our listeners. I appreciate you so much for being here with me today. 
I am so grateful that I got to have this conversation with you, especially because we're on other sides of the world and time zones sometimes can be a little tricky. So thank you so, so very much for joining me today. My pleasure, Crystal. It was an absolute joy being with you. And as energy whisperers go, I think you two are one because there is no distance at the moment. I mean, we could have known each other for our entire lives the way we just got along. And that's what energy is about, I guess. I love that. I love that. And I do feel like I have known you. So perhaps maybe we have at some point met before. (laughs) Thank you so much. And thank you to you listening. I appreciate that you guys come back week after week and take part in this journey and listen to the stories so that we can all learn from each other and grow from each other. I thank you. I love you. I appreciate you. And remember, you are loved in this world, even if you don't feel it every day. Thank you for joining me. Have a great week. We will chat with you next week. Bye for now.